Hey guys, it's Chelsea Messenger with Picks and Parlays. It's week six of the NFL. We've got some rapid fire picks for you. We're going to go down the line and pick a bunch of games and hopefully pick a bunch of winners. Now through October 19th, we've got a promo code UPSET if you want to save 15% off anything on picksandparlays.net. We've got Craig Trapp joining us to talk this week's slate, starting with the Ravens and the Eagles. The total is 47 and a half, and the Ravens are favored minus seven and a half. Ravens four and one on the year. Eagles one, three, and one on the season, and also one and four against the number. So Craig, who are you backing? Well, the Ravens, probably the most, I thought the most impressive win of all the really good teams last week. I just, I mean, the absolute domination by that defense. And now you face a Philly team that is banged up on the offensive line. I think that spells big trouble. Uh, I'm going to take the, the road uh, favorite here, which is not something I usually do laying more than the, the touchdown. But I mean, this line opened at seven. Now it's a seven and a half. I'm going to stay with the Ravens here at seven and a half. I just think Philly one and four against the spread. You just can't be uh, backing a home team that plays this poorly. Right. Uh, the Ravens look like their normal se selves last week, being world beaters against bad teams. And I think that continues here. So I'm taking the Ravens too. The Eagles actually have the most turnovers of any team in the NFL. And the Ravens have first it forced at least one turnover in 18 straight games, according to Odd Shark. So uh, that screams bad matchup to me. I'm taking the Ravens as well. Next up, a big AFC North matchup, Browns and Steelers. This line has moved to the Steelers being favored only by a three, and the total is 51. The Browns 4-1 and one on the year, Steelers 4-0 and oh on the year. So, Craig, which side are you backing? Well, I'm, I'm going to shy away from the side here because I like both of these teams for different reasons. I love this Pittsburgh Steelers defense. I love this Cleveland Browns offense. But the other sides of the ball are definitely question marks. Uh, to me, I think the total looks very easily uh, an over total. This No one has stopped Cleveland so far this year. And I, even a good defense of Pittsburgh, I just think can't stop them for the whole entire game. I'm going to take the over 51, but I definitely get on this soon because I definitely see a little steam. And I expect this number to probably even go up. This is one that I wish I would have jumped on a little bit earlier because I do like Cleveland in this one. I don't love it, but I think I'm just going to take Cleveland in the points because uh, this year Cleveland comes in with the best or the most prolific run attack in the NFL. I know the Steelers are supposed to have this vaulted defense or vaunted defense, I should say, vocabulary word, but they gave up 29 points to Philadelphia. I know their run defense was actually pretty good, but I just think that the Browns finally get that monkey off their back when it comes to the AFC North and plus they've got Miles Garrett who's terrorizing quarterbacks and I think that continues against Big Ben who's not exactly mobile. Let's move on to the Bears and the Panthers. Panthers favored in this one minus two and a half. Total is 44 and a half. The Panthers are favored for the first time this season. Craig what's the play on this? Well, I, I've been playing this Carolina team off and on this year and gotten them as, like you said, an underdog most occasions and had some good luck with them. Three and two against the spread on the year for Carolina. And Teddy Bridgewater, what a comeback story. I even see some one and a halfs out there. So you could definitely search this one out there depending on which side you want to bet. But to me, I just, I'm on Carolina here. It's a tough week, I think, for Chicago because you beat Tom Brady and company at home on Thursday night. You get the extra time. You know, everybody's telling you how great you are. You're four and one on the year. But to me, I just think they, you know, they beat a Tampa Bay team that was really, really banged up in a short week. This is a much tougher spot on the road against a Carolina team, even without McCaffrey, that is playing really, really well. Let's give me Teddy Bridgewater and company minus the points. I think I'm staying away from this one. It almost looks too good to be true for me for the Panthers because, as you mentioned, uh, Teddy Bridgewater's been really uh, good for them. And so is Mike Davis at running back. But I just... I don't love it enough to take anything. Moving on to the Packers and the Bucks. The Packers are favored minus one on the road here. The total is 54 and a half. The Packers 4-0 straight up and against the spread. The Bucks 3-2, but 2-3 against the spread. Craig, uh, what's the play you're taking? Well, Tampa Bay just is like the mash unit. The, the defense is all banged up. The offense, every good weapon they have is either playing hurt or not playing at all. And you're facing a Green Bay team that is really good on in the secondary, is amazing. Even no matter who plays, they find a way to get open for Aaron Rodgers and company. And then they have the great running game. I don't see how Tampa Bay beats them. So give me Green Bay minus one. Almost seems too easy, which usually in those cases, I'm jumping off the ship. But hey, until until the Packers back uh, buck me, I'm going to take the Packers. Uh, and, and they moved to 5-0, and oh, both straight up and against the spread. I know. I had the same reasoning last week about the Seahawks, uh, and we saw how that went. 
But yeah, I think this number looks a little fishy. I think I'm going to head towards the under on this one just because Tampa Bay supposedly has a pretty good run defense. And I think if the Packers can't get their run game, it's going to take away from their passing game as well. I think they might score under 30, 30 points for the first time this season. And I haven't really seen too much from Tom Brady uh, to make him think he's really going to line up the scoreboard. So let me take the under 54 and a half. Moving on to the Rams and the Niners. The Rams are favored minus three and a half. The total is 51. Rams four and one on the season, three and two against the number. San Francisco two and three straight up and against the spread. Uh, certainly a banged up squad with some quarterback issues as we saw Jimmy G benched last game. Greg, which side or what's the play you're taking on this one? Oh, what, a, what a difference a year makes from San Francisco and Garoppolo and company in that <laughs> offense. I mean, last year it seemed like everybody could, you know, couldn't uh, get enough praise on him. Now it's, uh, you know, he's been banged up and, uh, you know, la last week I don't think it would have mattered that that game was out of hand. But to me, I just think the Rams are the better team. And Aaron Donald is once again the best defensive player in football. If you don't watch their games, I mean, he absolutely wrecks every play. It doesn't matter if you double team him, single. I mean, it run away from him, he runs you down. You run at him, try to. It doesn't matter. This guy ruins every play. Give me Aaron Donald and company. As long as he's on that defense and healthy, I'm going to take. Um, the Rams here minus the three and a half on the road. I just think the 49ers got issues right now. Right. I think you're putting it lightly. I'm not sure how you even t take the Niners here. They've got major problems at quarterback coming off losses to the Dolphins and the Eagles, and they still have a lot of guys hurt, including Richard Sherman on the secondary. Jared Goff comes in leading the league in uh, yards per completion, a lot of big plays from that Rams offense, and plus that defense is pretty solid as well, so I'm going with the Rams in this one as well. That's going to do it for our NFL rapid fire picks. Good luck to everyone and thanks for tuning in.